Thank you for joining today. I'm going to review some of the new features that we are releasing for FiberPass Mobile with the 14.2 release. For 14.2, we've been focused on mobile usability and enhancing the user's interaction with the tool itself to reduce clicks and add efficiency. And to demonstrate those features, I'm going to start off by creating a new project. And we're going to start with a typical workflow where you would first want to create your outdoor plan. So I'm going to go to new plan, outdoor plan area, and capture map. Okay, we have a map connection that pulls up. I'm going to navigate to the building of interest and go ahead and download the map area. In the preview screen, you can see we have handles that allow us to adjust the view on the plan page and focus in on the specific building. It also gives us the ability to adjust the orientation to make the plan more suited for portrait or landscape printing. First thing I want to do is move my reference point to corner on the building and as you can see as I grab the reference point and move it to the location there is a box that pops up providing a magnification focus showing my cursor location. Now as I look down at my tablet screen my finger covers up the cursor so I can't exactly see where my reference point will be located. That offset magnification box allows me to see what is below the cursor and get the precise placement. Next step I want to model the perimeter of the building. So I'm going to hit the modeling tool under the basics and that brings up my modeling window. And I am going to zoom in on my start location and I'm going to select the draw wall function and I'm going to start at my first point and tap my second point. Now I'm going to tap and hold and you can see I get the magnification box. Right now it is locked in an orthogonal and as I slide away you can see that it will snap back and forth from the orthogonal and any other angle. I'm going to slide that down to the corner of the building here. Also note that a live dimensioning for that modeling segment is revealed. I'm going to place my second point. Again, the orthogonal lock is keeping my modeling lines at 90 degree angles. Now, in the previous version, to model off page, I would have had to turn off the model wall function and readjust my plan. But for 14.2, we have added a two finger scroll and zoom on our design pages so that I can use two fingers now to scroll and pan across. I'm going to zoom back in on the area of focus and when I place my next point it is remaining as one continuous model line. So I'm going to continue the modeling all around another two finger scroll and zoom to adjust and then as I get ready to place my last point I'm going to select a point offset from where I want to terminate the line and hold and that is going to bring up my magnification as you see as I bring it close it snaps to to that end point and now I have one continuous line for the modeling that closes in on itself. Next I want to draw the walls that go between the units so I'm going to turn off the draw wall function reactivate it I'm going to select my first point and then tap and hold and then slide down till I am locked in on the line. The snap to for the orthogonal but also snap the modeling to existing modeled lines. Turn that off and back on for my next wall. I'm going to place my first point. In this case I'm going to set it off from the desired wall location. Tap and hold and then slide down to get the the wall lock and then come back up to my first point. Now to get this first point snapped to the wall, I don't have to turn off the wall drawing feature. I can just grab that point and then bring it up and you can see it snaps itself to the wall. And then I'm going to carry on through, turn wall off and back on. And then finally for our last wall. I'm also going to draw some modeling for an unseen building here in the corner and that's to demonstrate an improvement that we have made, uh, a bug fix for the 14.2 release. So 
So I just added that corner in the top right, and I will show that to you here in a second. Okay, so we are done with the modeling, so I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Next, I want to add some markups. For example, I want to add a street name. So I'm going to go to my markup. Now notice before, under the basics tab with the markup, just like going to modeling opens up a separate window for your modeling, the markup used to do the same thing. But now with the 14.2 release, when I hit markup, it is merely going to toggle the toolbar, but maintain the same view window. That is also going to allow us to utilize the new functions we have for undo and redo, as shown in the top right corner of the screen. So I am going to draw a text box for my street. Okay, I'm going to draw a rectangle to indicate my target location for the building entry and add another text box. In this case it is a office space that we are entering. Alright, and then I'm going to use the freehand pen sketch tool to indicate that we will be coming from this pole down the sidewalk and into the building. Okay, well, it turns out that's not the route I want to take, so I want to undo that. And I'm going to hit the undo button, and it is going to remove the freehand drawing, but it will also remove the text and the drawing shapes that we've added. Okay, all the way back to that last text field. But if I want to redo those, I have that option as well. I am going to hit the checkbox to save those changes and now I want to add some design features so I'm going to go to the design tab and I'm going to add a cabinet that will be located at this pull location and then I want to add a terminal that we are going to locate on the side of the building alright now I want to connect those two units with cabling from our cable tab. Select my source, select my destination, and now if I wanted to add a vertice along that to show the route, I can do that as well. Okay, now when I hit the undo button, it will affect the design elements, removing the terminal cabinet as well as the cable. So if my outdoor plan is complete, now I can create an indoor floor plan so I'm going to go back to my plans menu here and from the bottom right create a new plan and in this case I want to use the outdoor modeling that we drew on the outdoor plan so I'm going to hit the use outdoor modeling and you can now see that just the modeling carries over and it maintains the page plan orientation and sizing that we set from our preview screen with the outdoor plan keeping us in a landscape view. Now if you notice the modeling that we added in the top right, if I wanted to focus in on that, we run into this issue where my view screen window is unable to get to the right side of the screen. So what we added was this scroll function. If you look at the view window in the middle of the screen, the bottom right we see the crossing arrows. If I grab that I'm now able to slide my view selection screen around to capture the necessary elements. Okay, but for this case, I'm focused on our primary building, so I am going to adjust the zoom level to focus in on the indoor modeling elements for that building and hit the checkbox to use. Next, I'd like to review the new features for the FiberPass desktop application with our 14.2 release. We'll start off by looking at the modeling and the new line segment dimensioning available. As I select a material and begin to trace the perimeter of my building, you can see that a live length dimension is being shown. Additionally, the offset angle from the previous line is shown at the vertice.
As I begin modeling the hallway, I can see where this would be useful when a floor plan is not available and you are taking measurements from your hallway walls in order to model the interior of the building. This is also useful in verifying that your designed cable components are of the appropriate length by being able to reference the model dimensions. And when I hide the floor image, you're able to see the dimensions associated with each of the modeled line segments. We have also updated the living unit and equipment area shape to allow for formatting. I'll start by placing the equipment area for our IDF. and then I'll start placing living units that will be associated to that equipment area. As I place the first living unit, I must adjust its size to fit the room itself. If I would like to continue placing with that same shape, I now have the option to select the clone tool, click on the unit, and then place an adjacent unit of the same dimensions. As you can see, the increment behavior for the living units follows the correct scheme. Not only are you able to clone the shape of the unit, but you're also able to make adjustments to the unit label itself. By double clicking, I can open up a properties window that first lets me adjust the polygon shape itself if I want to add a fill color associated with it, that is an option. I can also adjust the text properties by changing the color, changing the font, the style, and even the text size. By right clicking on the unit shape, I'm able to align the text for left, center, or right justification as well as top, middle, or bottom placement. When I select the clone tool and click the formatted shape, the next unit will carry with it the same formatting. With the 14.0 release back in April, we introduced a new subcategory of component under the infrastructure items for pathway. We have adjusted that pathway component so it now follows the same behavior as our cables. This allows us to use the quick connect functionality as well as the magnet to associate a pathway to a route. To demonstrate, I'll place ONTs in the units and I will place a terminal in our IDF location. And then I am going to select from our on-premise infrastructure pathway materials, our microduct. We're able to use the microduct the same way we would a drop cable in this instance, and I am connecting ports on the terminal back to our ports on the ONTs in the unit. If I place a route down the hallway, I can now use a magnet tool to place our microduct pathways into the route. For 14.2, we have also added a guideline to show us our page extents. In previous version, to see the edge of the printed page area, under modeling, page setup, title border, you're able to toggle on and off the page border if on, the page border is a solid black line that would show up in your printed page. If you want to turn that off to not show it in the print, you're unable to see the extents of the page and any components placed beyond it would not show up in the printed plan. But now, by turning off the page border, we have left behind a dashed line that shows you the page extents. That dashed line will not appear in the printed plan. And finally, to complement the pictogram mode, 
in design plan that allows you to switch the component images to pictogram icons we've added a legend for pictograms that can be added to the design plan page this is a new option but now gives you a reference for your pictogram icons and what they relate to in the design thank you for your time for more information, please visit us on our website at www.ibwave.com. Thank you.